Has this ever happened to you? <coughs> Don't lose your head. We have something that can get you out of this pickle. Of course we do. Why? By making them, of course. I'll show you. Materials needed. Oven mitts, fabric paint and brushes, fabric paint marker. Start by marking the bones out with the fabric paint pen. So it looks like this pen does warm up over time and makes kind of a nice uh, fill-in, but I still want to go into the paint, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll test this out some more. Yeah, I still want to go in with the paint. Here I go, smaller brush. That's fine, I'll just put it back in. I'm gonna give myself more paint because I know I'm gonna need quite a bit. I can always give myself more to fill in the bones with the fabric paint. Ah, no. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, now that I've got that all painted with the first layer, I am going to try something kind of crazy. I want to try to see if I can get, <laughs> get like the imprint and then it won't be as hard for me. It's probably going to mess up, but oh well, I want to try. We'll see if my plan worked. <gasps> kind of. <laughs> Only kind of. Alright, well, that was about as successful as I thought it would be without ruining the original. So now I'm just going to paint this side and then I'll get back to you. Left side, iridescent puff paint. Right side, white fabric paint. Apply fabric puff paint over the dry white fabric paint. Let mitts dry for 24 hours after painting, and they are finished. Final thoughts.
You know, I like my coffee weak, but I will admit that this is way weaker than I normally make it. My lovely assistant, whom I'm not sure what to name, I was thinking Skeletina. Uh, I can't do Mr. Skeleton, although that's what I usually call my skeleton. Uh, that's Jade Believer's skeleton name, and obviously not all skeletons have the same name. Uh, Skeletina? Skeletoni? Comment down below what you think my skeleton should be named. Because I'm not sure, and I can never choose, so. I wanted to talk a little bit about these. Uh, they came out surprisingly well, considering that they're dollar store oven mitts that I just painted over. <laughs> I, you know, I actually kind of love them. It's hard to tell, but the iridescence is pretty nice. Uh, and yeah, obviously you can get these, you can get like already made ones at like, I want to say it's William and Sonoma who sells them, and they glow in the dark, whatever. That's great and all, but like these I handed myself. And they were significantly cheaper than what you would have paid for Williams and Sonoma's. They're expensive. But I'm just kind of obsessed. I love the way these turned out. If I were to do them different next time, I think I would make a stencil and then use spray fabric paint. I think they make that. I think that's a thing. I highly recommend this as like a craft. It doesn't even have to be a Halloween craft. This can be any time of the year. I'm going to be using these all year round. I think this is a nice, easy craft. Yeah, it takes a little bit, just patience-wise, but that's anything that you paint intricately. <laughs> You know, I wish I would have been a little more careful when I was painting these. I have a couple areas that were just kind of messy. Um, I think the other thing I would pay attention to is these other mitts have a quilting on them, like a quilting stitch diagonally going back and forth. Um, and that's fine and good, but that shows up in the paint job. So I think if you're looking for something, granted if you're buying from the dollar store, I'm pretty sure these are the only black ones they have. But if you're looking for um, like a more uniform, solid piece that isn't quilted, I would pay attention to that for sure, because it does make a difference, I think, in the overall design. Um, but I think it also adds to my granny goth aesthetic that I <laughs> kind of go for. And just overall paying attention more to like, you know, just being more careful and less sloppy. Um, I do have, I, I'm impatient, very, very impatient, so I tend to rush things that I shouldn't. What do you think? I'm sure if you could move your arms yourself, you would give me two thumbs up. Look forward to future cooking, maybe Halloween cooking videos. If you have any ideas for Halloween recipes, I should try. I'm very curious about some vintage Halloween recipes. I think I'll ask my grandparents if they know of any weird vintage Halloween recipes. I'm really hoping for something like one of those jello salads. They're really gross, but really intriguing to me. I have a couple of cool jello molds that are vintage that I can use. I'm also down to do some popcorn balls. I did those one year. Those were fantastic. They're, yeah, they're way better than you'd think they'd be. Probably do caramel apples because those are my favorite. I'm not huge on the candy apple. I don't like the... Something about like the adding an extra protective layer to the apple is not appealing to my teeth. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I do have a lot of interesting halloween -y videos planned if you'd like to see those toll the bell and hit like and subscribe because that really helps me out share with your cool friends if you think they'd enjoy this interesting content <laughs> clearly so full of bon vivant bone vivant there really is no bones about this crafting tutorial. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go. See ya next time. Bye.